I'm going to continue the sharing of uh, the excerpt from Runaway Tourist. It's part of Chapter 5's Commerce Avenue from my memoir, Landscapes of a Heart, Whispers of a Soul. Trixia went on and on with her multiple comparisons on how other people's life is much better than the little mouse in a whole kind of living that Lara and her daughters are in. Beggars can't be choosers. But this stray-away compatriot of hers has a big mouth and a gnashing envy of a comparing eye of what others have, unaware that she was putting down even more the simpler but sufficient life of Lara and her kids. Lara thought prior sleeping that night, the earlier she finds a place for Trixia to work away from the Chino or the Canton de Sin, the better it is. After Christmas lunch, Lara could not trust Trixia to remain alone in the apartment. So she asked her to come with her in bringing Genevieve and Athena to walking towards the house of the Tyrannus family, where her daughters will be spending the rest of the Christmas day until the 26th of December. In Boca al Lupo, tapatele orecchia, mommy. Good luck and cover your ears, mommy. She would, because since last night and this morning at the breakfast table, Trixia continued to enumerate how lucky other richer families are to have more food in the table on Christmas Day than the few food that Lara served in the table. What healthy food which Lara prepared and served on the table was not good enough for Trixia's ambitious palate. At exactly one o'clock in the afternoon, Trixia and Lara were aboard in the intercity train. When the train marched, Lara still received four other phone calls from Leticia, Leticia's husband, Lillian, who is the Filipino organizer in Bilinsona, and Jean, the beautiful former model in Gentilino area. All of them with at least one common denominator. If you see Trixia, please tell her to go back to Serengo. Trixia, these are calls, so all searching for you. We have one more stop before taking the bus to Kerr, in case you change your mind and you prefer to go back to your uncle and Leticia's. No way, I'd like to remain here. I'll explain to them later. The faster the train marches, the sooner they are aboard the yellow post autobus from Belinsona to Kerr. The more relaxed Lara would be, for at least a thorn will be off her shoulder. They arrived around past nine o'clock in the evening at Kerr, and Gina fetched them from the station. Trixia asked, That's the city? Gina replied, Yes, we're leaving the city. Trixia said, You don't live in a city? Gina responded proudly, No, I live up in the mountains, half an hour drive from Kerr, and we live near Davos. Trixia murmured at Lara, What am I going to do up in the mountains? What do they speak up there? It can be boring, you know. Lara rep replied in a normal voice. She doesn't want to hurt Gina's feelings, nor how disrespectful it is to talk in murmurs when the one driving them is their host. Who will be helping Trixia? Trixia, wait till you see the view during the day. The village where you'll be staying is very beautiful. It will remind you of the sound of music, Trixia. I'm too young for a film like The Sound of Music. That's for all this, Trixia replied. Lara and Gina replied simultaneously. Oh, I see. Once Trixia settled down on the first floor bedroom, Lara talked for a while with Gina. Lara, I noticed she seemed like forced to stay in the mountains. Does she know she does not have any choice but hide farther from Lugano and Canton de Sin or she will get caught? Bad image and bad record too for Trixia's inviting family. I hope so, Gina. I explained to her many things, but it seems like she wants to be catered the way she expects life to be. Well, if she will remain to work for my winter ski inn, she better do what is asked of her. If not, I don't like any uh, another palamunin or another parasite in my home. I understand, Gina. Thank you so much for having accommodated my request and help her. I have the means, and I know I can trust you, Lara. Bless you for being so helpful. How much did you spend on the travel to, co to come here? Around 380 francs for both of us. I only wish to help her. Lara, remember and be warned. We don't know the re real whole story about her, so be careful too. Thanks a lot, Gina. That night, when they were about to sleep, Lara opened her portable bio laptop and watched the Lake House film. 
Supposedly, she should watch it with her daughters, but now she ended up watching it alone while she heard Trixia sobbing and talking in Tagalog in her cell phone. Lara didn't want to eavesdrop, so she put on her earplugs. Trixia tapped her soul shoulders. Sorry to disturb you, but my older sister in Japan wants to talk with you. Hello? Are you the one helping my sister? Yes. Will she find a job? Yes, she's safe here with my mother's relatives in Kerr. That's good, because if not, I told her she should go back to uncle in Sarengo. That's what I also told her. I hope you can be patient with Trixia. Thank you. Merry Christmas. You're welcome. It's my pleasure to be of help. Yes, and I hope she'll be all right. Yes, she will. After Trixia disconnected, she said to Lara, How can you be so reassuring that I'll be all right? But is it all right here? I'm in the mountain. And they speak an ugly language. I'm far from the city. Lara looked at Trixia, containing her anger, amidst all the whining. Lara needs some good night rest and sleep after six hours travel by train and bus combination. A fresh start in the morning would do well and ask Trixia what she truly wanted. It seemed that all efforts are not enough for Trixia's critical mind. The next morning, Trixia's frown and long face seemed to have stayed overnight. She complained about being in the mountains, about the Swiss German dialect, about the demands of knowing German language, and after a delicious breakfast of Gina's homemade siopao, Trixia said, I want to go back to Lugano. Gina and Lara exchanged glances. It was around past seven in the morning, and Lara's appointment in Zurich is at three o'clock in the afternoon. Roger already sent her SMS if she will be coming, and the guy was completely confused when she said she is in Graubunden region, in a small village up in the mountains south of Kerr. She is getting tired of Trixia's complaints and indecision. Trixia, this is the last time I'll ask you, and please give me your final decision. What do you really want to do? I want to go back to Lugano. I don't like it here. Okay, excuse me. I have to see the post autobus schedule and train to Zurich. You see, I have an appointment today in Zurich. So you can come and join me and later we hop on the evening train from Zurich to Lugano. Oh yes, yes, I will see Zurich. Trixia exclaimed like a spoiled child. I won't be walking around in Zurich, Trixia. I have to meet someone. Is it a man or a, ma a woman? Does it matter? Lara studied Trixia's new curiosity. Of course, because if it's a man, then it's a date. Well, we'll see, Trixia. When we are in Zurich, I need to talk to this person for at least an hour or so. Gina was smiling by the corridor, hidden from Trixia's sight, as she waved at her to come closer. Lara left Trixia in the kitchen and went to Gina and talked also to her husband. We're sorry for this brief visit and disturbance. Thank you for having welcomed us to sleep here last night. But I need to come to accompany her back to Lugano now via Zurich. Tell me, Lara, what is this trip all about? How do you know that young lady? Honey, it's none of our business, Gina interrupted her husband. It's a pity to visit for just one night and not at least experience to ski up in Davos. Can't you reschedule your trip for another day? Have some fun in the snow? Come home, come here again with Athena and Genevieve. And how come the girls were not with you last night? Honey, drop it. Okay, Gina, you're all weird. Gina and Lara ended up laughing. Lara and Trixia thanked their host, and while in the train going to Zurich, Lara sent SMS to Lillian, Leticia, and Jean telling them the same message. Trixia is with me. She agreed to come home this evening to Serengo. Lara got more than one reply. Some of them were, why this evening? Why not now? Why did you hide her? Where are you now? Why did you cover her up? Who do you think you are to help her with these crazy plans? After the rain of SMS stopped to buzz, she answered them in one clipped reply. Ask Trixia. I was happy to be of help. She's okay. Then her phone started to ring. She only answered a call from Jean. Are you crazy to help her? Maybe. What? Where are you exactly? On a train to Zurich. What? So you're still running away with her? No, we are going back to Lugano. But why going to Zurich? Because I brought her up until near Davos. Oh my God, Lara, that would have been a perfect hiding place for her. Yeah, but she hates to be in the mountains. After a night at the beautiful chalet of my close friend, she never stopped complaining because she misses the city. So here we go, Jean, accompanying her back to Lugano. 
how silly it was of her to jump on the first train to help Trixia. She thought, you see, I forgot to ask if she was a city or a mountain person. Who was on the phone? It's Jane. You told her where we are? Of course. Should not have done it. Why, Trixia? You're no longer in hiding, so I can tell them where we are. It's better to be honest. Is my uncle still calling you? No, it's Letitia, but I won't answer her call. It's expensive to talk on the cell phone. Besides, by now, your whereabouts will be spread like a radio. Lara smiled. Jean was known to be a whistleblower of hot gossips. Once and for all, this chip of the thorn will be off her shoulder. She looked briefly at Trixia, focused to admire the Swiss countryside. She thought of the 380 plus Swiss francs train and bus costs. It was like a money thrown away for one night, just simply helping out a desperate lady, lady whom in the end she discovered that Trixia was behaving with multifaceted character, which crumbled down as Lara observed her through all these hours during the trip from Kurt to Lugano. When they were in Zurich Hauptbahnhof, Lara spotted immediately the tall, handsome Kurt Russell features of Roger. Trixia murmured to her, He's so handsome. You didn't tell me that he's super guapo. Lara looked, shook her head, and nodded to Roger. I'm sorry, we arrived in two. Can we drink a cup of coffee so we could talk? I hope this, this is not the first and last time I'll see you. Lara felt that Roger likes her a lot in an instant. As for Lara, her protective, elusive spirit is back. First, she was upset on the situation she got in with Trixia, and seeing the complication of Zurich and Lugano distance, she thought, if this man will turn out to be a serious one, she was not here ready yet, as she needs to finish her private pilot license, and having passed the A2 level exam in German, she still needed to get the B1 level in German. She needs concentration, not diversion, nor distraction. That's all for now, and I'll share again a part of this excerpt next time thank you for listening and sharing this post and visit my website angelicahopes.com and odysseyofaheart.com for my other writing thank you have a nice day